everyone. My name is Deneen White, and I am the host of the VIP Ignite Live podcast, and I am so excited to have the one and only Mr. Greg Reed on the call with me today. Hi, Greg. How are you today? Always good. So good even I want to be me. <laughs> I love that answer. That's awesome. So, Greg, I know that you're a very busy guy, so I don't want to take up too much of your time, but can you tell us um, just a few of the projects that you're working on right now? Yeah, I've always got something, you know, irons in the fire, so to speak. We're casting a couple major motion pictures right now. Woohoo! Fingers what? crossed. On top of that, I've got two uh, books coming out, uh, one of which will be the final book that I ever do as a solo author. So it's been uh, work in the making that I'm very excited about. Awesome. Tell me, okay, so we're speaking to actors and models right now. Can you tell me just a little bit about the two made the two motion pictures you have coming out? Yeah, one, I wrote a book. And so I'm making a short on there right now. It's called The Secret of Happiness. And the concept is for years, we went around and interviewed millionaires, kids, celebrities, monks, everyone to find out what the secret of happiness is. And we wrote it into a really cool uh, book that will come out to become a bestseller. But we're also making a movie short based on the findings and teachings. And then I've got a long full feature one. It's called The Mexican Christmas. Basically, it's Romeo and Juliet in the modern times. A Hispanic gal from San Diego falls in love with a rich white guy from the Hamptons. And the dichotomy of the two families collide to finally come together on Christmas morning, get engaged, hence a Mexican Christmas. That's awesome. So um, talk to me a little bit about the happiness, because I think happiness is an elusive thing that people, a lot of people are chasing after. Can you kind of give us... Um, I'm not asking you obviously to give away everything, but can you just give us like one, what is one tip to be happy? What is one tip of happiness? Well, everyone goes out to discover happiness, to find their happiness. And at the end of the day, we need to create our own happiness and understand this uh, happiness is basically the definition in which that we give it at the chosen time, right? So if I woke up in the morning and say, if I can get up and get to work on time without traffic, I'd be happy. And then you show up to work, go, if I got a raise today, I'd be happy. So it it is elusive because it's always moving. And what is to one person is different to another. And it's constantly moving. It's like a moving target. But the main thing is the greatest discoveries, I think, is what we found we didn't know. I'm going to give an example. I thought for sure when I started this project, you're going to like this. I was done. From the very beginning, I did this process because I thought I knew the answer. The secret of happiness is a subtractive equation and not an additional equation. And I thought, that's it. I'm done. Now I'll just go write this book and kind of have a good time. But I found out I was wrong. See, I thought happiness was a subtractive equation and not an addition. Meaning when you add a car, a house, a relationship, a kit, well, it gives happiness for a little short time, but then it goes away right away. So then adding something doesn't make happiness, but removing shame, guilt, toxicity, bad relation, that brings happiness. So I go, that's it. And then I sat down with this Hispanic gal. You see a theme coming. And I said to her this equation and she goes, looks at me like I had two heads. She goes, "You, you, you have a first world mentality. I said, what do you mean? She goes, you're missing the whole thing. She goes, for me and my family, where I grew up in Mexico, our entire village, everyone is submitted for a green card, for a visa. Every single person for generation that no one's got through, tell me. I'm the first person. So by me adding that one little step, you would have thought that I was a national hero (laughs) where I grew up. She goes, but when it was the time that I got my apartment and I bought my first vehicle, a really nice one, on credit, FICO scored America. She goes, you would have thought I won a gold medal. (laughs) They said everyone went nuts. But what happened is it gave hope to an entire village where it changed their mindset. And they too wanted that for themselves and their family. So they kicked it into high gear. So by adding these little things, change the way we look at life and our future as a whole. Wow. That's a lot to process because you only can see things through your eyes because that's your experience. But now that you're seeing it from the other side, how has that helped you? Well, uh, uh, gratitude. I mean, it keeps going down and gratitude, obviously, you know, it's beating a dead horse, but on the same note, it's so true. So for example, if you know, you're a, uh, live in America, and just as an example, because we're got so much abundance, we can give away stuff and get rid of it and still find happiness. So 
at the end of the day, if you go to certain villages in Africa, boy, if you added a well and they didn't have to walk four miles to get water, that'd make them pretty happy. Yeah. But more importantly, if you leave someone behind that could teach them how to repair that well when it broke down, they'd have ongoing happiness. Yeah. And so we're starting to really delve in and look in this. And that's what the Secret of Happiness Project's all about, is peeling these layers and saying, hey, what we thought was this and we found it was this. And we don't give the answer. We let you make up your own mind. Awesome. Greg, I know your son is pursuing a career in the entertainment industry. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be a dad of an aspiring talent? And I've seen him on the red carpet, so he's a lot more than aspiring. Yeah, well, it's, what's funny about that is his mom is the stage mom. In fact, right this second, they're up in L.A. doing a photo shoot on a yacht with all these you know, Nickelodeon kids and all that good stuff. But yeah, that's his goal and vision. And I decided to stay out of it, to be quite frank. Okay. Uh, I figure out what I'm going to do is not allow my influence influence that at all and let him kind of do it on his own. And he got his first commercial you know, I made like a thousand dollars doing a major commercial, which is pretty cool. And that gave him the ding, ding, ding lights went off and he started hanging out with these other kids and he just got picked up by, I think it's called MMG uh, modeling talent oh, wow. in New York mm -hmm. and also got picked up by fame cast up in LA. So okay. now he's on his way and we'll see what happens, but I will say we're in New York and I, I, I got him on the big billboard so he could see himself up on the Times square. Oh, and wow. I think that was the incentive that he needed. He went, I want this all the time. That's awesome. Well, you you have so many different irons in the fire. And I know that you one of the things that you do is you host events where people can network on a high level. And in the entertainment industry, the one thing that we found is that if you meet that one person, you can snap their fingers and change their change your life. That's all you need. So can you talk about the importance of networking? Because I feel like I, I don't feel I know you are one of the best, most masterful networkers I've ever met in my life. Yeah, the idea is to put people in the right place at the right time and get out of the way. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Give them the opportunity to mix and mingle. So we do this event called Secret Knock, as you know. And we've had everyone from Oscar winning actors like Richard Dreyfus down to Oscar film producing. I mean, we've had everyone there. But what's really cool about it is also it gave birth to a major project. We had Frank Shankwitz, founder of Make-A-Wish, um, on stage one time. And I asked him at the end of the interview, what was his wish? And again, he looked at me like I was crazy. He goes, what? I go, you're the founder of Make-A-Wish. What did you wish for? He says, no one ever asked me. I said, what? I said, well, I want to be the guy that grants the wish of the founder of Make-A-Wish. And he says, I go, well, anything you want, what do you want? And I'm going to give it to you. And he says, I want my story to be told so my grandkids will know I did something. So he signed over his life rights. And I said, well, Frank, I'll make this into a major feature film. Just know I've never made a feature film. And it took six years of trials and tribulations. But when it came out in 2019, uh, we made the ballad for the Oscars. We won awards around the globe. And it's still trending worldwide on all the streaming devices right now. The moral is everyone can be a hero. You don't need to be a celebrity or billionaire to give a pair of socks to a homeless person or stop a bully from fighting. And everyone can leave a positive effect in the world in which we leave. And that can have a ripple effect to inspire other people down the way. Awesome. Normally I'd like to ask, okay, what, what's one piece of advice that you would give to an aspiring talent? But it sounds like that's your piece of advice. You don't have to be a hero to make a change in the world. And surround yourself with people that are accomplishing what everyone else is just talking about. Seek counsel, not opinion. Counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship, where opinion is based on ignorance, lack of knowledge. If you go to a family friend and say, I'm going to become a, a famous actor, well, they might try to talk you out of it to protect you because they know it's a challenging industry. Plus, they've never been in a feature film. But if you go to someone who's, you know, made an Oscar winning production and say, hey, I want to be a feature actor, what do I do? They're going to give you counsel based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If we would spend our activity only seeking counsel and ignoring opinion, that's the day your life would change. So for myself, I just jumped to the front of the line as kids. Look, if you get in trouble, if you go and cut the PE class or the line in school, but in real life, that's what we get rewarded for. So I say, who's getting the results that I want for myself? I reach out to those people and I duplicate what they did. That's awesome. I love that. Well, Craig, I know that you're busy. So I, I just want to thank you for spending a couple of minutes here, giving me some words of wisdom, giving my audience some words of wisdom. So 
where can people find you if they want to follow you on social media? They want to know what you're working on. Yeah, just go to Instagram, Greg S. Reed. It goes right to me. Uh, what's really cool about that, there's no filters, there's no, uh, you know, screeners or, you know, gatekeepers. It just goes right to me. And if there's anything I can do to be a contribution, you reach out and you know the answer will be yes. Yes. Awesome. Well, Greg, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. And everyone, if you're listening to this podcast, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the VIP Ignite Live podcast. What I want you to do is hit subscribe because I have a lot of amazing people coming up on the podcast. Make sure you follow VIP Ignite on all forms of social media, and I will see you on the next podcast. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.